Hey y'all, we are back again with In My Opinion. I'm CJ. And I'm Mark. Um, and this week we're just gonna be talking about a couple of different things. Um, just about being a firstborn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, growing up the oldest in uh the I guess dilemma it can cause sometimes with your family and with your other siblings and all that. Yeah. Um, I know like so technically people probably don't know this like so I have an older brother. I'm only met him one time, but technically like I'm the oldest because you know, we didn't grow up with him. So I'm the oldest, and I feel like I am the go-to, like the most right. responsible. Like I always got to have everything in line to order. And if I don't, it's like it's a problem. And I'm like, dang, man, can I just catch a break one time? Like, yeah. can I just, yeah. can I get some help? <laughs> <laughs> can, right, can I get some help because I'm the oldest? And it's like when you're the oldest, where do you go? Because everybody else come to you. So right. who do you go to? When everybody's pretty much depending on you, looking at you is like, all right, Mark got it together. Mark going to be okay. It's always like, so what Mark had to say about that? What? Like, well, sometimes I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> I, I'm just, I, um, I don't, I don't know. Like, that's how I feel too. Cause <laughs> me being the oldest, like my siblings, I love them to death and they come to me about everything. And like, I can rely on, you know, them for the most part, but at the same time, it's like, Everybody always thinks, like, I have my stuff together. Like, oh, you got this great job. Oh, you got school. Oh, you live by your son. It's like, I am constantly and emotionally stressed out all the time. Right. And, like, my sister, Capri, she always says, she's like, yeah, I called you because, you know, you're the reasonable one. You're the one. You're the voice of reason. I'm like, most of the time, y'all don't even know, like, what I really want to say. But it's like, I'm always, like, holding back. I'm like, I know I have that perception uh -huh. of what I need to say or who I should be. Right. I mean, same thing. Like, everybody, like, oh, Marquise has pretty much voice sound risen. I'm the oldest of all my siblings on my mom's side and my dad's side. And then, like, my Matt, my second brother. Like, a lot of times when he needs something, he texts me. And I don't always have to answer sometimes. So, I kind of got to go. And then I think, like, okay, so uh, what, would, what would our grandfather say? Even though he passed a few years ago. What would he say in this situation? What would so-and-so or what would... I mean, just kind of trying to figure it out on the fly. And I think that's pretty much why we are the oldest, because we go out first and we're like the trailblazers. Yeah. So we got to go out. We got to live. We got to break down the wall and be the, uh, <laughs> I guess, the forcer, enforcer yeah. and figure out stuff every it's like being the for everybody parent else. A little bit, though. It is. So the crazy thing is, when I was reading about this, they said that we are a lot like our parents. Because yeah. we were the first oldest and we had most of adult attention on us for like a year or until your other siblings came along. Right. So technically we are the third parent. Yeah. So sometimes <laughs> sometimes they'd be like, oh, you got to you gotta have fun and loosen up. I will as long as you don't do nothing stupid. Exactly. Like, and my thing growing up, I always told Matt, don't do nothing stupid. Because <laughs> I knew for a fact he was going to go, he was going to do something stupid. So I'm telling him, don't do anything stupid. Like funny story. We, we were on summer break, uh -huh. and this is before we had to go to football practice, and he comes downstairs, and he has a lighter, and he has Lysol. Oh, that's fun. I didn't know before. That's fun. <laughs> has lighter and Lysol, and I'm seeing him walk outside, and I'm sitting there watching TV, and I promise on everything I love, I said to him, do not do anything stupid. We're like, I'm not going to do nothing. <laughs> Five minutes, maybe ten minutes later, all I see is this humongous giant smoke. Coming from the backyard, and he comes to me in the kitchen, and he's like, "Hey man, give me the uh, give me the nozzle from the uh, from the sink." I'm like, "You know that's not gonna work, right?" And I told you, "Don't do nothing <laughs> stupid." I'm like, "Get the uh, get the water hose," and then I went upstairs like you on your own, because <laughs> I'm like, "I told you so." If the fire department come, I told you not to do nothing stupid. He thought it was a great idea to take Lysol fire and light some uh, dry leaves on fire. Oh, dry leaves. Dry Highly leaves. Flammable. Right. He thought that would be a good idea to do that. And with me, you know, I'm the oldest of five. So, like, I have twin siblings. We're, like, 18 months apart. Then, you know, I got Cassius and Colin. And right. Cassius is, like, three years younger than me. And Colin is 10. So, that gap right there, like, Colin being 10 years younger than me, I'm just like, dude, you don't even know. The parents yeah. you have are not the parents I have. It's not the same parents And you said trailblazer kid. I think that's so funny because I call us the test dummy kids. Let's see what works and what doesn't work <laughs> on these first kids. Because like, I feel right. like Colin, he got... My parents are going to hate me for saying this. I don't care. 
But he had so many more like privileges and availability to do all this stuff. Um, so I'm just like, what do you mean that you have uh, like he could just do everything? Like he could stay up late. Like when I was a kid, my dad would not let me stay up past eleven o'clock. Like he like go outside past eleven. What's past eleven? I ain't at the open past eleven, but gas station and legs. I'm like, dude, like I just want to hang out with my friends. Like yeah. I'm not even doing anything. So I don't know. It's just the first kids is a lot, and I also feel like we're growing up with our parents. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, I I can agree with that. But so I don't look at a lot of times. I don't look at it myself as just uh, solo because me and Matt we like. I don't know, 16, 18 months apart, something like that. So I look at us both as test dummies, even though every between my other siblings, everybody still comes to me. So it's funny that you said he they have more uh, liberties to do stuff because it was actually me. Uh-huh. Because, But the reason why Matt wasn't able to do as okay. much is because he was always in trouble in high school. Okay. His friends to this day say that he missed an entire summer like entire two or three summers because he was just doing stupid stuff. He would just lie for no reason. I'm like, what, what are you lying for? Just stop. Just stop, bro. Just go with the flow. Ain't no need for you to lie. If you say this, this will happen. If you do this and act like that, then this will happen. But, you know, but I, I still think it is everybody else still does look up to you in that role, even though our roles are kind of reversed a little bit. And then it's funny actually kind of seeing my youngest brother, Mason, and then my two sisters grow up now. They don't listen to nothing we say because they don't think we know yeah. anything at all. And I'm like, okay. I okay. think, like, that's that's how it is a little bit with Colin. Like, Colin, um, Colin's 10 years younger than us. Right. Uh, well, me. And he listens to me on some things, but other things he's just like, we had this whole conversation about him going to college, right? So, Colin got a full ride. He's at BG, whatever. He's super smart. We had this whole thing about um, how he should present himself. <laughs> right. So, he has locks. Uh-huh. And, you know, like, I'm pro-black. Like, wear your hair, do this. But I also told him, it's not even about you having locks. It's about you keeping your hair neat. Right. Like, you can have locks of still neat. I'm like, if you, you know, go to an interview, you should pull your hair back. Like, that's just a thing or whatever. And he's just like, why can't I come as I am? This is not the true transparency. I'm like, dude, it's about professionalism. And he's like, you, I can't believe you really are saying this or this. And I'm like, dude, you have to come presentable. Like, this is not about me. Because, you know, I love fashion. Right. Like, you know, I, I love to dress. Like, tennis shoes is my things. All that. But he, he's not really into all that stuff, which is, you know, a little different for me. <laughs> but right. he's just like, why do I have to do it? I'm like, dude, you have to professionalism. You have to come. Right. And with that being said, I also feel like my parents, like, if we were on a boat drowning, I'm going to be the one. they like, she'll figure out. She's going to learn how to swim. Yeah. She's going to learn how to swim. She's going to figure yeah. it out. But... The other ones, they're like, let me get a life jacket. Let's get them a raft. Let's have them swim. I'm like, no, dude, I'm drowning too. Like, help me out. But they're like, no, she'll figure it out. I, and a lot of times I do think my parents are like, because I am, you know, mature, I'm responsible. That A lot of times I think my parents, like, they don't worry as much about me. They're like, no, she'll get it. Like, I know that this child is going to be okay. Yeah. And the other ones are like, look, if he... If I let him go, he's going to drown. He's going to be at the bottom of the ocean. So <laughs> right. I really feel like that's how they... That's how they view us. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because for me in life, it's like growing up, I used to be so upset because it seemed like I was always thrown in situations where it's either I got to sink or swim. Mm-hmm. And obviously I can't uh, sink. So I just got to start trying to figure it out as best as I can on the uh, on on the way up or whatever. It's like I feel like I was thrown in a whole bunch of dummy missions. It was just Man. like <laughs> it, it was just like I don't have a lot of details for example, nothing specific. It'd just be like my mom say, go meet. Actually, a few years ago, she was doing something, and she wanted me to go pick up some Mother's Day gift or something from from one of her friends or something. I pretty much had no details about it. It was just <laughs> you meeting uh, my friend at Giant Eagle at 2.30. Uh, she drives this type of car. When I got there, it was also like three types of those cars. Right. So I'm like, uh, like oh. I get a number or something. Right. Uh, and then my thing is, I don't, 
keep asking a whole bunch of questions because I know when you ask those questions and you press them, they get upset. Then it's like, all right, I'm stuck in the wilderness. You upset. Now I'm upset that you upset. And it's just like, I'll figure it out. So I, I would just figure it out. Then I'm just like, you know what? Forget it. This is going to make the most sense. And if I do it my way, you can't be upset for me doing it that way. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Like for me, like me going to college, I really feel like, man, my parents just threw me in the wilderness. When I went to college, like, Oh, like, oh, so y'all not going <laughs> y'all not gonna give me, like, no roadmap. And, I mean, the best thing I can say that college did was provide me with that independence and that structure of me, like, figuring out, hey, right. you got to you gotta be an adult. You got to get it together. So, it's like, you have to do these things or it's not going to work out. But, on the other hand, I feel like my parents, I don't think they didn't know how to, to be honest yeah. with you, as the first child. And, like, I mean, I'm really the first person who went to college um, other than my cousin, like, and finished and went through mm -hmm. or whatever. So I don't think they really knew how to support me in that avenue because Got like you. I'm at school, like I was working three jobs. Um, I was playing basketball. I was uh, 16 credit hours. Like I was doing it. Yep. And I'm just like, can y'all send me a Raymond noodle packet or something? <laughs> like I'm me and my friend Bettina, like, um, you know, that's my right hand or whatever. We eating biscuits and butter, like, for dinner because we ain't got it. Like, we poor. We're broke. We ain't got nothing. And I don't know if my parents actually knew, like, the severity of me being in college with nothing right. versus, like, their thought of, you know, she going to be fine. They're like, well, you know, the cafeteria. Go to the cafeteria. I'm just like, the cafeteria closes at 7. I go to, I went, you know, I went to a predominantly white school and – the cafeteria, the nuns, they shut that stuff down. The sisters shut it down at 7. <laughs> so we got practice until like 6.30, 7, I mean 7. Right. What y'all think I'm eating? Right. Like I got a work study job. I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out. But like really like being the oldest child is really about like setting that example for the rest of them. Yeah. And then like my brother, <laughs> my brothers, they crack me up so much. Because like Caprice, I think she's the, like my sister. She's the one I lean on. Uh-huh. A little bit more than I say my brothers, but my brothers, they're like, what? Struggle? You don't struggle. You don't know about anything hard. Like, your life was just so perfect. You just grew up in a rainbow and candy land. You had daddy all to himself. Like, especially like Colin, he always talks about how, like I said, we have two different parents, right? Right. We tell you apart. So I had young dad. I had dad who was able to hoop. I had dad who could take me places. He got financially stable dad. Right. He don't even understand, like, uh, my parents gave me this example. Like, I didn't know our lights was off. Like, it was tough. But they used to, say, well, we used to have these things called candlelight dinners. And we used to think we were so fancy. Like, yeah. we used to go home, come home and sit down all nice. They'd bring out the nice china. And we used to think we were so cool for having these candlelight dinners. And, like, my um, stepmom, she recently told me, like, I want to say, like, a month and a half ago, like, oh, yeah, we was doing it because we ain't had no electricity. I'm <laughs> like, what? Right. So, my, but my siblings don't understand, like, Again, yeah, I had, you know, dad who can move and do all these other things, but I didn't have dad who, like, oh, yeah, I can spin this out. And I don't yeah. know. And, like, my dad still was able to do stuff with Colin, but at the same time, he doesn't have, like, again, young dad. Like, right. my dad was dunking still when I was a kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, so uh, let me ask you, through going, all, going through all of this, mm -hmm. do you think it set you up for everything that you're doing now? Did it help you hinder or kind of like stunt growth in a way? No. I think that, to be honest with you, like, to be one for I'm you, honest with you, I think it made me a better person. Like, I literally can figure out anything. Like, I can make $20 last for two weeks. Right. Like, I I, I can figure it out. And, um, and not to say, like, my siblings came, but I do think my siblings have a harder time with certain stuff because they didn't have that struggle. Mm-hmm. Especially like the um the two youngest ones, Cassius and Colin. I do think that they don't they don't have that that resilience factor on certain situations. Yeah. Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe so that's so Colin because he I don't know if he's really seen that yet. But yeah, I do think that I can get through a lot more because I was in those situations. Yeah. I I, I think it definitely helped me too because like. When I'm at my job and dealing with like younger people, mm. it always thinks about I would think about critical thinking. Like yeah. if there's a problem, how am I gonna solve this problem instead of I feel like when I'm at work and I work with younger kids, it's like they have a problem, they're gonna run to somebody else to try to figure out. And I'm like, just do this or do yeah. that or go do this. So I think 
uh, that helped me because I always remember my mom telling me, and I hated school growing up. I hated school, didn't Did like it. I hated okay. school to the core of me because I don't like waking up early in the morning. To this day, I still don't. I know. I, okay. <laughs> to this day, I still don't like waking up early in the morning. But I remember my mom always telling me, do it right the first time, especially when it comes mm. to my homework. So then I'm thinking, okay, all right, I got to do it like this. But how can I do it right and do it uh, pretty much efficiently and effectively? Yeah. The way that I look at it. So I do think that it helped me. I don't think, it helped me too, but I also feel that I've grown so much of independence that I don't know how to ask for help. Right, right. So that is a big thing. Yeah. I, I do think that it made me so independent, like, I figured out how to get my credit up. I, I mean, I didn't have any credit. Like, 24 years old, coming out of college, I had no credit. Yeah. And pretty much, you know, having no credit is like having bad credit. Pretty, So, yep. I figured yep. out how to get my credit up. I figured out how to do these things, you know. I had to take some alternate routes and to get into where I was going. But when we talk about, like I said, as parents and things like that, my dad, me and him had this conversation all the time, and my stepmom. Each child needs something different. Mm-hmm. And... Just thinking that, like, being the oldest, it's like, dang, but why can't I have that need? <laughs> and my mom right. tells me this story all the time. Like, I probably train my twin siblings. Uh-huh. So, like I said, I told, we like 18 months apart. Like, I'm 28. They're 27. So, like, we really are close in age. But they wanted to be around me so bad or uh, whatever. Like, I told them, like, if y'all keep peeing on yourself, y'all can't come. And my mom was like, it was really amazing. Like, they never peed on themselves after that. Like, never, ever in their life. Like, they wanted to be around you and not like, just having that leadership. Right. But on the other end, again, like I said, who helps me now? Right. So so I think you, well, first let me ask you this. But like you said, the uh, independence part of it, do you feel sometimes you just want to be separate from everything and by yourself and then just almost sometimes just want to be shut off from the world. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. And, 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 and why is that? I don't know. You know, it's so crazy because like, again, I love my siblings and like, I even had to explain to one of my siblings, like, he's like, yeah, you did you want to hang out with this stuff like that. I was like, and it's not y'all. I'm really the type of person where I get socially drained. Right. Like, I get to the point where I'm all, because I'm always helping, I'm always doing this or doing that, that's like, hey, I need to be by myself. I need to be right. away, and I don't want to talk to anybody. I mean, I think I just made a post, like, I hate small talk. Right. Like, I don't like when, like, my siblings, y'all call me, y'all need something, and like I said, it's no beef or anything like that, and I'm not trying to rush you on the phone. Just like, if you call me, you need something, get to the point. Don't right. butter me up, don't sugar her. If you need something, say what you need right. and get off my line. And I feel like that's a part of the independence is where, I like, I'm so tunnel vision and I'm so direct. It's like, I don't want anything that's going to pretty much hinder me. Right. And I'm not going to say hinder me because, like, I don't think they hinder me. But I'm saying, like, I just don't want anything that's in my way. Like. Yeah, I, I, I got you because a lot of times, like, after full week of work, like, on a Saturday I just want to be by myself. I don't want to be bothered. So then sometimes somebody call, ask me, can you do this or can you do that? And it's like, sometimes I'll be like, yeah, I could do it. Then other times, no, I can't. I, and it's not that I can't. It's I don't want to just because for my own sanity, yeah. I just want to be able to be at peace. And then sometimes when I say no, they be like, well, you're not doing nothing. That's the point. That's my whole point. <laughs> I don't want to do anything. And I think as anything. the oldest, it's an obligation. Because, like, even with my, like, my grandparents or, like, my mother and my dad and stuff like that, like, they come to me to, like, handle it or whatever. And it's like, yeah. me saying no isn't because, like, you know, something that, like, oh, you're selfish. And it's like, and I mean, yeah. I went to therapy about this, like, and I flake. Yeah. Like, I'm the type of person that... If you invite me somewhere on Monday, ooh, Friday might not be looking good for you. And um, I was even reading this. No, I'm not even going to lie. If you ask me day of, it's probably not looking yeah, good. Yeah, and I was reading this advance. about the oldest child that we overcommit to so much stuff that when we don't do something or we like, sometimes we really, really just like flake or we just don't do it mm -hmm. and it makes you look bad. And like I like I went to therapy about that. I'm like, man, I don't know why I keep flaking on people. Like I don't know why. Like when you first asked me, I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna do it. I got y'all. Like I'm gonna help you with this, do this, that. And then it come times so where it's like, for the most part, like yeah. But it come times like events or something like that. I'm like, 
Yeah, I'm not going, like... And it's really because you commit to things you don't want to. But as the oldest, like I said, as I was reading, as the oldest, you feel obligated to not only take care of everybody um, around you, like your siblings, but your friends. Yeah. Like, if you're the older, if you're the oldest, like, you take care of a lot of your friends. Yep. I mean, and then I completely agree. Like, sometimes I agree to stuff. I'm like, oh, that seemed fun. And then the day of, in the back of my mind, I'm like... Do I even want to do this? Yeah. Like, even this morning uh, with all of this, after I got done with all work and stuff, I'm like, I should probably cancel. <laughs> but I can't do that. I'm not going to cancel. I committed to this. We It's been a while. So you got to hone in sometimes. But, yeah, I, it, I do find myself a lot of times doing that. But I like you were saying, overcommitting. Do you think, because we are the oldest, do you think it's that we want to be perfect? Yes. <laughs> I I have a complex. Oh my god. And it's just now starting to I'm just starting to like really recognize that I feel like I need to be perfect. Right. Like I feel like I need to be in every aspect. I need to achieve everything top tier, like no mistakes. Um I will give you an example. So you know like I'm getting my doctorate right now. Right. And Thursday, I'm back at work full time. We used to have Wednesdays off. Man, God bless those Wednesdays. Um, we used to only go to like the kids used to only go to school four days a week. Now we're back in five days a week. I coach basketball. I'm the varsity assistant coach at Luther Knees. Mm -hmm. So we're as soon as I leave from the west side, I'm coming all the way back to the east side. We're practicing from like four to seven. You know, I usually don't leave at like seven thirty, almost eight o'clock. Driving all the way back to Will Willoughby, taking care of. You know what I'm saying? I like stuff I gotta do at home, doing my homework. I'm still somebody's girlfriend. I'm still somebody's sister. I'm right. still somebody's uh niece. I'm still somebody's daughter, grandchild, like doing all that stuff. And then like my grandmother, like she was sick. Yeah. She was sick this week. Like so in between me literally taking my from leaving work, dropping my niece off, coming back, going to get my grandmother, dropping her off at the hospital, going to practice, practicing for three hours, going home, doing all my assignments, cooking dinner, and getting myself together. I'm like, dude, <laughs> right. I'm trained. Yeah. And I sometimes, yeah, it is the perfection thing, but I think, because I'm the same way, but I think what the best thing for us to do is to uh, kind of, not always say no, but at least help them figure out an alternative to me not being there. Do you feel like you're hard on your siblings? My parents tell me I'm judgy. Like, I'm judgmental on my siblings. And I'm like, I don't mean to be judgy, but it's just like I expect more from them. Yeah. Like, for a fact, I am. I am super judgmental. Super judgmental yes. on my siblings. I don't always mean to be, and I don't mean mm -hmm. it in a harsh way, but it's just like I see the potential. I see what you can do, what you need to do. I just kind of want to nudge you into a uh, into a different way. Yes, right. I, I, and that's my. It's like I expect so much from y'all. And my brother Cassius, he made a comment. I'll never forget this comment. He always told my dad, he's like, "CJ's the son that you always wanted." I'm like, wow. But for him, it's like I. He really has to feel in these giant footsteps. Right. He felt of me. Right. And, like, the pressure of him being, like, the middle, well, he's, like, the third middle child because the twins are the twins. Yep. Like, that pressure of being able to fill in in that capacity is a lot. So, it's, like, as the oldest child, like, you have to be yeah. the parent, the third parent. The, the third parent and yeah. all of that. But I think the best thing for us to do is don't completely commit to everything. Everything is not going to be perfect. It's going to be all right. Sometimes you got to be a little... As hard as it is for us, be a little softer on everybody, including siblings. I know I, I hate the sound of that being softer, but <laughs> I think I think we're going to get it. So I think that's our time for the day. It is. All right. So we'll see y'all next week. We'll see y'all next week. <laughs>